it's very funny to make a video about style and fashion when I'm wearing an ugly winter sweater, but uh, I love it. Look! Hi everyone, my name is Ksenia. I make videos about sustainability, minimalism, zero waste and mental health. And fashion, apparently, as well now. <laughs> Last week I posted a video about sustainable fashion and that it's a complex issue and uh, there are pluses and minuses to anything and a lot of points to consider. So today I'm going to offer you some solutions instead of presenting you and hitting you with more problems. So if you already arrived to the decision to make your wardrobe uh, more sustainable, there are several things you can do uh, at the beginning. If you have a lot and it's maybe messy or you don't know even what you have, I think probably you should start decluttering. This is a traditional decluttering technique you will find it everywhere. You basically put the items that you have into buckets and uh, one would be keep so really good items that are not stained have no holes that are clean so make sure if you want to donate them or give it to give them to your friends or exchange with your friends um, and family please make sure they are clean and someone would actually want it if uh, uh, it's peeling you can use uh, an old ra razor blade to shave the peels off or just uh, if they're quite big for example for big chunky sweaters like that you can just peel them by hand and just make sure you don't uh, stretch the fabric too much and don't um, damage just like i did here <laughs> don't damage the threads so here you just have it and then just put in your compost or something And the third bucket would be mend. So if you're planning to wear it, it's a maybe pile. Basically, either it needs some kind of adjusting, you need to mend it, you need to uh, maybe try to remove a stain, or you're not sure, maybe you might uh, want to keep it in for the next season. So put it somewhere where you can see it and try it more and more especially and so give it uh, the care and attention it needs and try and wear it and see if you need it and i don't really like to throw away clothes so i propose that if something can't be fixed if you don't like it and it's made out of natural material you can tore it up and make lots of clothes for them out of it to uh, dust to put as bedding for your pets to donate as bedding for animal shelters, to compost. Oh, one of the good things that with the holidays coming up, you can use uh, furoshiki. This is a traditional Japanese way of wrapping, not just presents, but a lot of things and storing. And last year, what I did is cut up a scarf that was torn. Um, I made smaller pieces of fabric like this, and then just wrapped the presents using furoshiki method and uh, it was a hit. <laughs> I also decorated it with some cinnamon sticks. There are plenty of uses for rags you can think of. After you declutter your wardrobe, you need to do some kind of audit. You need to uh, divide them by seasons or if you live in a climate where it's not really any kind of season, maybe just divide them by occasions by a type of wear, so tops, bottoms, or and jackets. So divide and see if you have enough of everything. And then an interesting exercise would be to see where you got it and when, and how many times you actually wore it, because you might realize that you got an item that still has a label attached and you've never actually worn it kind of items if they have labels and can't be returned anymore because the return period is overdue i propose you sell them because you can you can actually expect maybe more than 50 price for this item since it's never been worn i 
sell my clothes in the Netherlands on Marktplatz. There are also Vinted app, United Wardrobe, eBay. Never done it, but I heard it's a thing. Depop. I'm pretty sure there are several uh, for for each country. I will make a list down below for you to check out. After you've done the audit, you can try to mix and match your clothes to see what you can wear and what kind of you know, combinations you can make. And also try and search for the most common combos that you turn to lean in and ask yourself why. Is it because you like them? Is it because you're, they are super comfortable? Is it because it's something that's worn by your friends and you like it on them and you're trying and trying to try and fit it on you and it doesn't so just try to see what are the motivations behind this maybe even make it like a mental note about that so that in the future when you go shopping you say to yourself oh yeah that's a step staple i don't need anymore or oh yeah that's a staple i love when revealing this kind of uh, insights for yourself, you might see that you've made mistakes, some of the mistakes over and over again. And I will also share the list of mistakes that I've made on my way. For me, one of the mistakes was that I have duplicates, have bought, uh, intentionally bought duplicates because I, you know, if I love a sweater, of a certain model, a certain fit and color and cut. I will like it in different color or different cut, but if they're completely similar, the, the color is uh, different, I, to be honest, just gravitate to one. And since they're so similar, you feel like you're not wearing anything new. If it works for you and if you like this sort of uniform dressing, which I will touch up later on. And if it calms you down that you have kind of the same thing and maybe it's for you, but I realize that it's not for me. Another thing is having too many bottoms, as in jeans or trousers or too many skirts, especially if these are not practical type of bottoms for you. It's up to you, of course. I can't advise you on the amount of items you want but for me what works since it's a very minimalist wardrobe as well one or two set of bottoms uh, works perfect it's no one pays, pays attention to what you're wearing on your legs anyway because people mostly look at your face and everything that's here so if you're mixing up the top it's already and you feel every day rather than wearing one top and all different types of trousers and skirts you can think of at the bottom another <laughs> rookie mistake i would have to say about buying online that i did is firstly not knowing my measurements when you buy a bra or so something for a jacket where you need to know the uh, shoulder width or something like that. I think it's very useful to ask someone to help measure you or measure yourself in front of a mirror to see that it's straight. If you don't have a long measuring tape, you can uh, use a normal thread, just a piece of rope, and then measure it on a <laughs> ruler. And another rookie mistake uh, that I did is <laughs> not looking for any kind of reviews and not reading reviews. I would just fall in love with an item and just buy it and then it turns out that it actually fits oversized or it fits too small and I would order a size based on the measurements I have but I wouldn't pay attention to certain fit or cut. Another mistake that I've definitely done is when you're searching for something, it's usually towards offline shopping and then you are too tired to try it on or Maybe it's too busy or it's hot and you just want to get out of the place. Part of the mistake of not trying things on is definitely you might be too lazy to bring it back. It's not allowed to bring it back if you buy secondhand. Or if you buy and wear it for some time and still don't like it and then return it, then it's not a guarantee that this will be resolved to someone. 
There are actually quite a lot of items that get thrown away because people return them without a label or um, damaged um, from wearing the items and they just end up uh, being thrown away or burnt because some fast fashion brands and also even you know, luxury brands burn their products so that not to <laughs> diminish you know decrease the value of their materials so this is also something to consider another thing that relates to style in particular is not to buy must-haves so if you just google for example a certain style or searching for your style or staples basics a must-have wardrobe or even wardrobe capsule which we're going to talk uh, later is uh, that there are a certain amount of uh, tank tops, t-shirts, blue or black jeans, skinny jeans or whatnot that you're supposed to have, or a trench coat, or leather jacket. Um, and then uh, you feel inspired and you feel, oh, that's cool. If I buy this particular item, I'm going to be able to build so many looks, but then it just doesn't work for you, your style, your body your lifestyle as well, or the weather you are in, the climate you are living in. So wardrobe itself is extremely individual. It is, in the end, a way to express yourself. And even when you are making the choice to have a particular, just very, very minimalist, very, very uniform uh, wardrobe, you're already expressing yourself because you're expressing your beliefs that uh, you don't want to pay attention to clothes or you don't have time to make decisions every day. Now I wanted to touch on the fun part about the fashion and fashion journey and style which is basically finding your style finding what you like yeah i've been trying to find my style for years i've read so many articles about it and watched a lot of youtube videos about this as well and everyone is kind of saying the same stuff pick onto your wardrobe look for uh, what are your staples look what you like what you look good in in um understand what is your uh, color palette, if you're warm or cold, or neutral, blah, blah, blah. I think it could be useful if you don't really know what looks good on you. Maybe it is useful, but it gets confusing quickly. <laughs> and the fact that something may, may look on your, well on you, on your body and on your face, doesn't mean that you like it. But for example, for my body type, I'm supposed to wear wrapped dresses and that um, because I have an hourglass shape. But <laughs> I don't like dresses. I love wearing trousers. For example, I don't really like girly girly style and or elegant and chic style, which I like on other people. It just doesn't work for me, especially not now when I'm working from home. So how do how do you find your style? I will link down below a very, very interesting video which helped me understand how to build my style and what I actually like. For me, it helped to realize that I'm a relaxed person and I want to be comfortable all the time. If something is scratching, making me sweaty, hardening my tummy, it's a no-go. No <laughs> high heel shoes or anything like that. But at the same time, I, in my imagination, uh, I love uh, highly polished uh, looks, you know, chic and elegant, uh, like um, Dora Beckham and Meghan Markle, but I don't really wear high heels or pencil skirts, so what do I do? And for me, the decision was just to not to wear relaxed uh, trousers like jeans, but wear chinos, I also realized that I like androgynous heel and even though I'm uh, a plus-size girl 
it doesn't mean that I have to emphasize, you know, my breasts or anything like that. I actually still can look androgynous even uh, being in a big and shapely body. So I just wear a little bit of an oversized feel. I also wear a lot of male clothes. I wear my partner's uh, sweaters, jumpers, shirts, trousers, belts, socks, shoes, <laughs> undergarments, caps, gloves, scarves. <laughs> <laughs> anything anything you can think of from traditionally male or even just bought for uh, cisgender male items uh, I, I wear them and um, it makes me feel incredibly comfortable because male clothes has uh, deep huge pockets and and I feel sexy as hell <laughs> when you take your father grandfather your uh, male partner or anyone else's clothes please make sure they approve of that <laughs> otherwise maybe just buy uh, an item second hand buying second hand huge sweaters is um, an addiction so i will uh, warn you against it you can only you have only one pair of shoulders only one uh, only one body so make sure you just buy one good sweater two if you wear them all the time so they don't get disgusting <laughs> another thing that i love to borrow from a traditionally male wardrobe is uniform dressing so when we talk about uniform style uniform Uniform dressing, everyone is thinking of Barack Obama um, wearing two uh, color of suits. Steve Jobs, uh, they say they don't have decision fatigue when they get dressed in the morning. Uh, people who dress, um, who you also have a style uniform, such as Anna Vintour with her, with her uh, classic um, hairstyle and glasses, Carolina Herrera. And my all-time favorite, Emilia Elt. Uniform doesn't have to be uh, a duplicate all the time, like with um, Mark Zuckerberg, for example, where you don't have to wear the same type of two shirts, two pairs of jeans, and just wear them all the time interchangeably. You can make it more exciting and make it a little bit, make it in different colors, so you can still have duplicates, but in different colors which doesn't work for me, but it might for you. Or you can just have, uh, which is a more my style, you can just have a combo that you wear. And I have only one pair of trousers, so I have uh, several sweaters and several blazers that I put on top, and it, it makes me feel cozy, comfortable, warm, and put together at the same time and I always know what to wear. And uh, I don't feel restricted either because I wear t-shirts instead of shirts. So it looks casual, but also put together since you put uh, a blazer or a nice looking sweater on top. And your trousers are also put together. So even if you pair with a t-shirt, it looks kind of nice. Of course, now since I started working from home, I got a second hand in a lazy pants suit for myself. And I also love it. Um, these uh, look so sleek, kind of looks chic, and I can just throw something nice on top, especially with the coat, and it just looks okay. You know, no one, no one is the wiser that I'm wearing basically lazy pants. This concludes part two of the video on sustainable fashion, sustainable style. If you have any questions, Let's hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have a uniform, if you uh, have been looking for it, or if you just realize that you need it. Maybe you already have a quarantine uniform, which consists of uh, track uh, pants and a hoodie. Let me know. And as all blog bloggers and YouTubers are supposed to say, please like this video, subscribe, 
and push the notification bell button to not miss any time when I'm posting a new video.